Let's talk about Brian Harson really quick. He is starting a new podcast. Brian Harson is starting the Huddle with Horrors podcast. Um, now, I want to get into uh, this one main question here, and I want you to tell me first. I've got a couple of answers myself, but him starting this, do you believe it is a good idea or a bad idea? I think it's a bad idea, like a really, really bad idea. All right, I would love to hear your your reasoning on this. Um, first off, I think uh, Huddle with Horrors uh, sounds terrible. Uh, it sounds like, A, a shot at Waffle House uh, because we've got a Huddle House situation going on here, which I'm sure it's not. It's a football thing, but that's not where my first brain went. Second, it sounds like you're saying horrors, like you're telling horror stories in your huddle, which is really weird, and I don't know why we're going to Brian Harson for this. Um, and then the, the, the reason that this is a bad idea is because I don't think Brian is – like, if you're already famous and you're going to do a podcast, which is what most people are doing now, you've got to have an audience. I don't think Brian Harson has been – like, Jim Harbaugh has a massive audience. Every, many, many NFL fans love him. Many people that love college football loved him when he was at Stanford. And then now he's at Michigan. So, like, basically people at Ohio State will hate him. But he has a massive fan base. He has a massive following. He's been around. He's been relevant for a long time. Yeah. Who's listening to this? Well, I'm going to go from the opposite side. Half the Auburn fans don't want him there. Well, Who's that's so. So that's almost exactly why I'm going to go. I'm going to go with it's a good idea, right? Because he has not been able. Not been able. How's this? He started off on the wrong foot at Auburn anyway. Right, this was a bad idea for him to not uh, in, ingratiate himself into the Auburn fan base with the media, with everything else from the very get go. He had opportunities to sit down, like the SID was able to set up interviews and this and that, and he just turned them away. He didn't feel like that was in his wheelhouse. That he he didn't want to talk to these people, and it hurt him. Like, I think it really hurt him in the process uh, because I do think that he is good when he's on a mic. He's good when he's in front of people. Like, I've seen talks that he's given. I've seen all this kind of stuff. I think what you said, like, Auburn fans don't even like him. Uh, Auburn fans don't know him. And I think if you find a way to put yourself out there, and he's starting off by his first episode is uh, with Eric Keesaw, who is the new offensive coordinator. Uh, you want to... He's using this to basically um, show off his staff, like introduce all of these new guys to the Auburn fan base. And you're going to have your Auburn diehards, but that's the majority of the people that are really going to be listening. But along with that, you can also, and this is my number two here, uh, he like publicly was not able to control any of the narrative around what was going on with all those rumors and everything that came out Back in what February, I guess, or early March. Um, if you look, like this is going to help show that he is not the issue at Auburn. Like, if they do fire him, it ain't because of him, it's because of what is going on inside of that program. So, I think in a way, this could be really, really good for him to get himself out there and let him control some of the narrative that goes on around his program and actually introduce himself a little bit better to some of the fan base. Because as of right now, because he has not done a bunch of interviews, etc., that fan base doesn't really know him. And other fan bases that might open up, like <clears throat> Arizona State, etc., um, <laughs> if he were to leave Auburn after this year, like this could be a way to let other people get to know who he is, his coaching philosophy, etc. You, you kind of see where I'm coming from on that one? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I, my biggest thing is, is I, it just, I don't, I guess Auburn fans are the only audience, but like, that's a, okay. And, and this isn't, this isn't besmirching to Auburn fans, but like, I just don't, I don't know. Like, I don't think like, he's trying to make right. money off of this. I, I don't think he's selling ads and all that kind of stuff. I think this is literally just, Hey, we're going to, we're just going to sit down for an hour each week. And I'm going to sit down with like a different position coach or a different assistant coach, or just 
different people that he knows for one hour every week, and he actually get to control the conversation so that he can show who he is. Like, I think that's what the whole point of this is. Otherwise, I like, why would you do it? <laughs> I mean, you're probably right. That's probably why he's doing it. I mean, that's probably the truth. I just don't, I don't think it's a good idea. I, I, I only think bad things are going to come from this. But now you might be right. Like he, he could become a wild card with uh, with an open mind. But now, hang on now. But that's that is you and I are very different people. Look how you you handle a mic and how I handle a mic. Like look at how we both <laughs> do this job. I say things all the time that afterwards I send you texts and say, "Man, I feel like such an asshole for saying that." <laughs> like because. Because I'm really bad at holding in my feelings, and when I get passionate about something, whether it's anger or excitement or whatever, like I just, I just go, and and I just vomit my my you know my feelings all out all over the place, and it's just one of those things where I tend to have a lot more regrets. While you are very controlled, very reserved, very in control of what what you're saying and how you're saying it, and you're not going to make the mistakes I. Because my, we just do this job differently. And my thought process is always uh, maybe more logical than emotional. I, I think that might be the, the right way to say it. And I am curious what Harsons is going to be. Like, I'm, I'm going to listen to this thing just to well, get an idea. You know? But hang on now. But here's the other part, too, though. At some point in time, if it's not entertaining and he's boring, all he's going to do is hurt himself. Like, yeah. now, now they're all going to hate him. Tens of people are going to listen to it. And they're gonna all be Alabama fans, just getting fodder. That's just it. <laughs> just laughing, right? Just hee hawing. Yeah, I mean, you might be right about that. I'm I'm very curious what it's gonna be like. Uh, whether or not he does a good job of introducing these uh, this coaching staff, etc. Um, all all of these coaches think that they are like them. All of these coaches think that when they say things, they come out really well. And most of them don't. Most of them, it's bad. Like, it's really bad. Are there any other SEC coaches that have a podcast? I don't think there are. I don't know. I wish Mike Leach would get one, and I don't even want to talk about football. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.